Yes. <laughs> Happy Sunday. Mm -hmm. Happy yes. fall. Yes. Happy so Libra season. season. Welcome to episode three of Popping Off Pink. Mm -hmm. Look at all this beauty in this room. I mean, if you're listening, you can check us out later on YouTube. <laughs> it is the um, first thing is it I want to do. Or is, it is it what? Is it three or is it four? It's three. Three what? Three. This is three. Oh. This is for sure three. <laughs> um, welcome back to Julia. Mm -hmm. I'm Chi Chi, one of your regular co hosts. And we have in our midst. Hi, it is I, Humber. <laughs> And Out special here. guest, lovely chaos. Lovely yeah, chaos. Lovely. Back again. Back at it again. Yay. She got some stuff for y'all, but before we get into that, I want to talk a little bit about episode two. I was not on episode two. I was there, but I was not on episode two. Kimber killed it and hosted episode she let two. She me drag the boat. And hey. Julia was was co-hosting. So what do y'all have to say? How do y'all feel about? We have the most wonderfulest guest ever. We have the Cypher Queen, yes. Yes. Reggie Angelou. Miss Reg, slayed my soul with those. Um, <laughs> what are they? The chimes? Oh, don't ask me. There's some type of chimes. I'm totally gonna mess them up. Yeah, so relaxing. She slayed my life in a spiritual way. The Jenny Echo from. Far rock away. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> okay. I definitely have one regret. I should have asked her to freestyle, but I think she's done enough of that. Oh for yeah. Us. Yeah. Um, Follow her on yeah. Instagram because I saw name. her. I saw her freestyle, and I feel like just a few days ago at some um, venue. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Turning it out. So Booking shout busy. out to Reg. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely tune in because she's amazing and. What was your favorite part? I'm going to say mine last. What was your favorite part of that particular episode? Um, the tension that we shared. That was my favorite when part. I... <laughs> <laughs> well, then I guess, you know, it's, it's shared. Mm -hmm. The tension um, in the debate we had about C. Dolores Tucker's perspective and how I could understand the intention of it versus how it's received, um, you know, and how it kind of correlates to the way people react today when you challenge their taste in the music that's, um, I guess, a little controversial. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely that. Julia, what yeah. was your favorite? My favorite part? Yeah, definitely this one, the tension, because <laughs> <laughs> we love a challenge over here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I definitely appreciated uh, how she, you know, that's her personality, but how she incorporated and how the podcast was, the episode was about also education. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we don't mention that enough, but how music teaches us. Yeah. And how yeah. music is in our lives and, you know, it's the biggest teacher out there without being in four walls. Exactly. I have to say, it was fun being on the other side because during that tension, I was like, dang, like, Kimber's making some really good points. And I was like, dang, Reggie's making some good points. And normally, I would have been in there trying to make my points. So it was nice to just hear both sides. I thought that was a beautiful moment. And to your point, Julia, my other favorite part of that was listening to you teach us about your perspective of growing up with hip-hop and having just a completely different perspective um, coming from Italy and then your parents kind of shepherding your music taste at some point because of some of the things you were repeating mm -hmm. from hip-hop. So that, those were my favorite parts. So well done, Thank ladies. you. Thank yes. you. Um, and now, <laughs> you know, I was at the first Muse Lovely Chaos pop-up and I have to say I expected it to be dope because I've been at her open mics over the past year. I think I performed at one. I hope you burned that video. No, I still have <laughs> um, you guys and I will show no, we're it good. if I have to. We're good. You're gonna drop it on her birthday. But I, I was more I was more pleasantly surprised if I if that makes sense. When I came in, I really, really, really liked the setup, the venue. I felt like all the vendors there really complimented each other. And I got to talk to each of them and I was like, this is really dope because you know, she could have just had a pop-up, had food, and had somebody perform, and nobody would have thought anything. 
but I think it just goes to your character that you also put other people on and other vendors and you know they share their contact information I signed up with some of them purchased some things so how do you feel about it and tell everybody about your store also here we are a week later <laughs> oh my god when I say that that was just it was crazy but it was crazy in a good way like leading up to it I was nervous because I had this vision and I like dreamt about it and everything I was like okay this has to come to life found the venue immediately booked it I didn't look anywhere else and then it was just like things just started falling into place and I'm just thankful that at the end of it all it was exactly what I wanted it to be and everybody there enjoyed it everybody came with something and walked out with something whether it was a purchase or just like a connection or like they networked with somebody it was just dope so it was just like overall like I was nervous because I hadn't really had something in a while because as you know I used to have my open mics mm -hmm. and that was something I was super passionate about but like this time around it was like okay I'm premiering my apparel in person to people who've never seen it and like felt it and I've got I got so many like positive things about just the setup and the vibe of the place but also just like my brand in general, which is like museofthechaos.com, mm -hmm. y'all check it out. Twenty percent um, off with code Kimber. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Kimber is a brand ambassador, <laughs> but yes. international. <laughs> and I do ship international with hey. dubs. But um, I just feel like my brand overall is about wearable expression, like a way that you can express yourself through your clothes, through your pieces, through your jewelry. Mm -hmm. Like, we all express ourselves through, you know, anything that we put on from our nail polish to how we wear our hair. So I feel like it all complements each other and it falls into place. And I was happy to share my, you know, expression with other people on and know that other people relate and actually look forward to purchasing the stuff or, you know, enjoying it. It's so fucking beautiful. It really Thank is. You. It's so lovely. <laughs> lovely chaos. Lovely chaos. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, today we got some really interesting shit to talk about. Oh, yes. Um, I think we've been mm -hmm. doing a great job this season of really highlighting phenomenal women. Um, they're as guests or as topics of discussion. Mm -hmm. And we're going to spend a fair amount of time today talking about Mar Braca Kill. I was going to say girlfriends. We're definitely going to talk about girlfriends, but... The woman um, behind Girlfriends and just a lot of the phenomenal work that she's done. All but stuff that she's done. one of the things I want to start with is that, um, <laughs> as you do with creative projects, she had to pitch Girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And the person who ended up giving it the green light was Kelsey Grammer, better known as Frasier. He felt like, you know, a lot of people were like, why would he be involved with these this black show? Um, but he felt like it was consistent with what he called his brand of smart comedy. Mm -hmm. And as we sit here and the discussion we just had, I can't help but smile because they described it as a show about smart, young, ambitious African-American women with their own issues. Mm -hmm. So their own yeah. personal issues that were addressed on the show, but also addressing issues that were specific to the community, such as fibroids, AIDS, loneliness, colorism. Mm -hmm all of that on one show that had it not ended so abruptly because of the writer strike um would have been the longest running african-american show it tied like with the cosby show yeah, it was longer than yeah. the jeffersons yeah. yeah and i just want to say that like it's important to have that and how much i miss that like yes we have so <laughs> much nostalgia when it comes to just like the 90s and it's because we don't have anything of any substance nowadays that shows and promotes black women in a positive way. So it's not like negative and it's not like, oh, you know, like just this person twerking. Yeah, and it's like, like a game of table tennis. <laughs> yeah. Obviously, when I was watching Girlfriends, I was hella young. Mm -hmm. But it was just like, you know, something I would sneak and watch with my mom when she was watching, just snuggle up beside her and be like, hey, what's this? <laughs> and like, as an adult, I appreciate it so much more because. I can relate to those characters. Mm -hmm. My friends can relate. Like, we're all some ambitious, educated women who are about our shit. And that was girlfriends. It definitely made me want to aspire to be that as well. Exactly. Um, because for me, growing up, I never really related to... And I wasn't, you know... And, of course, I mean... 
I don't, I don't like making disclaimers, so mm -hmm. if you want to be offended, be offended. Uh-oh. Um, <laughs> challenge comes. I wasn't, <laughs> I wasn't um, raised, like, in the ghetto. Mm -hmm. So a lot of, um, you know, I don't know, shit like Friday mm -hmm. or whatever the fuck y'all love so much. I couldn't relate to that, and for a long time I felt like there's like different degrees of blackness for everybody. Mm -hmm. And Girlfriends was one show where I'm like, okay, like I can see my life mm -hmm. kind of playing out this way. I'm definitely Lynn, but I can oh. see my life. We, well, we're, we're identifying. Oh, we are identifying. Okay, then. let me just say real quick then. I like what you said about you said about aspiring because. Mm -hmm. As you were talking, Kimber, I was thinking, I aspired, all of them gave me something to aspire exactly. to. That's mm -hmm. the thing. Even if you identify with one or more characters um, than the other, they all gave me something to aspire to. That's what right. I loved about that show. And they all sh showed their flaws, their cracks, whatever. Um, and they weren't all rich. Like, they were all in, like, different tiers of success yes. in their lives yeah. and had their own definitions of success. <laughs> it's so funny because, like, people that I actually grew up with, I was telling them that we were doing this show. Mm -hmm. And who I thought in my head, they thought I would... And I didn't ask. This was unsolicited. I wonder if this is what I'm thinking. Oh, my! one of my best friends, and you know who you are, she just was like, oh, definitely Tony Childs. And I was like, what? Of course. What? I, I was... <laughs> So I was child. thinking Maya because she was like I, the I kid. was thinking Maya too. I was definitely thinking Maya. My friends have told like, me. like Tony's insane. So you said I'm I fucking can't. insane. I mean, you know Thanks. what? And Tony, Thank you. you. Like, Thank you. Like, Thank you. Thank you. They, they, so look awesome. like, they do look like they can be related. I they I've had people, Maya and Tony. No, they can't yeah. I've had people tell me between um, Joan definitely and Joan. Tony. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I heard like a mixture yes. between yes. those two. Who yes. am I? Mm. I think Joan. If you Joan. like, yeah, from mm. what I know so far, you would be kind of like Joan. I guess I don't know, like a mix of Joan, Joan like and a Lynn. Splash of Lynn. Yeah, yeah, definitely not one completely. I feel yeah. like Joan and Lynn, Lynn. together. I'm asking this because okay, for all everybody who doesn't know girlfriends, uh, first for me it was my first time hearing girlfriends this year. Oh. What? Cause she was a baby when it came oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, God. Background, rewind, rewind. So, background story. I come from Italy, and in Italy, melanin is lacking in TV. So we don't have these shows, and nobody knows this show. Yeah, mm, and uh, especially in the early two thousands, the only show that would come there was uh, Friends. I would say Sainfield or you know these big oh, major wild yeah, yeah. Caucasians, you know, shows. And so Girlfriends was definitely not part of our spectrum. Like maybe in one remote channel you would get it, but mm. yeah. yeah. So yeah, definitely I'm so I know more about the history. Mm -hmm. Like I read more than watched the uh girlfriends girlfriend. yeah. yeah but what struck me is that you know shows like these even if uh, they're not anymore like on air or anything they leave a legacy oh yes. yeah they leave a legacy Definitely. and like uh, even if for me i never watch it never experience it somehow reading the history behind it the writers mm -hmm. and the, also the products that came out of it and everything mm -hmm. like as a black uh, woman like a younger it really puts you like oh wow i can do this it's oh. really beautiful yeah. Yeah. and especially a girl like a woman like a uh, tracy ellis ross mm -hmm. who was there like look at her now yeah mm -hmm. like you can aspire to be like her, like she's my auntie. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know your story now. Now she's your auntie, oh, really? Rainbow. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All black, and that's the thing. So we just disclaimer. So we already knew going like from the summer, like we hadn't even gotten into the summer yet that we were gonna do this show, and so obviously we did, you know, episode one and two. Mm -hmm. So as we're getting ready for this show, what happens? Tracy, Tracy Ellis, Ellis Ross drops that bomb. Drops like the bomb, she's on Instagram with the rest of the girlfriends, and she's there on Blackish. I mean, Blackish hasn't started yet, but I that was that. amazing. I I'm like, that. okay, that's scary. 
Yeah, I'm like the timing of that. And shout out to Reggie. I'm gonna I'm show y'all a screenshot. He liked one of my pictures. The fifth girlfriend, <laughs> William. Yes. William. Yeah, it was hilarious. I loved how most black sitcoms had like that guy friend who was also like Yeah, I was like, watching Mr. Cooper and they had yeah, like the... like even Steve Harvey. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like all the shows, like it's very obviously important to have that one guy friend that can give you the... <laughs> <laughs> I can't with you. <laughs> give you what now? Because you but, know William's character and Joan got together. Did y'all see that? Yeah. yeah. It was the end, yeah. And it was, yeah. And they were it. Oh, yeah. And I guess he was too big or something? Because he would always allude to himself as Big Willie, which I always thought was a joke. Yeah. And I think one of his exes had said something about that, but I'm like, oh, they're just playing oh up. God. But when him and Joan got in the bed together, he was like, oh, he told Lynn... Which I could totally see happening with yeah. Kimber in real life. Like she's a she's an ouch girl. Like she yeah. would she couldn't take it, and then she was all pissed off that they had this conversation behind her back. I cannot. So, y'all want to talk about I the Williams in your lives? I'm not gonna get on that topic. Oh. About the Williams. I mean, but, I mean you got um, plural Williams. You got big Williams in your life. I cannot. <laughs> Shout out my to my, to my boyfriend. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I just put that out there. All right. y'all. I'm not curious. Please stop. Please stop <laughs> overstepping the boundary. That's why y'all Williams in the first place. Exactly. Like, when I come to you about my boo problems, just listen. <laughs> That's what you're going to get. My yeah. boo problems. They want to listen with some tequila. Mm-hmm. Like, girl, like come, I'll take you tell out. Tell me about it. <laughs> Like no, you ain't low. Julie, you quiet now. You, I know you got some wings. You in college? You ain't got no. You don't have a boyfriend, do you? <laughs> <laughs> that laugh though was so guilty. That's You're all funny. I have to say. <laughs> uh, Mom's listening. Right. I'm <laughs> Those were, that was one of those last like, just in case my mom is listening. My mom is listening. My mom is listening. I love you, mom. She encourages me to be the best woman that I can be. Before you get a boyfriend. I mean, <laughs> getting a boyfriend is a journey. Oh. You know what? You're fucking no. right. <laughs> Especially in so, New York. She, <laughs> exactly. she supports so me. Sweet. All my girls supports me. And let's see how that journey goes. Yes, girl. Good luck on that journey. Bless. You're need it. Bless it be. But um, one thing I wanted to say, because I feel like nowadays, um, insecure is like the modern day girlfriends for mm-hmm. most people. In okay. a sense, somewhat. Yeah. Somewhat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but I've seen this tweet and I thought it was hilarious. It was, it was like Tony Childs walked so that Molly can run. Mm. And I was like, or like crawled or whatever so she could run. I was cracking I up. I love I insecure. You know, I'm seeing it because they decided not to bring it back. But I do have to say, that character, Tony Childs, mm-hmm. I don't, there's nothing you can compare that to. No. They lost a million viewers when she left the show. Mm-hmm. And people, I mean, this is before the internet was what it is now. Mm-hmm. People somehow, you know, communicated to Mara because she talked about this, that mm-hmm. they were not going to watch the show. And they were, you know, they, that's how upset they were. And she, mm-hmm. when I watch, rewatch the show, because like you said, it's been so many years. I do have a different appreciation for it now. Whereas mm-hmm. before, I was just kind of like, it was on when something else was on that I was watching. But right. I did watch it. But I sat with it. And I was like, this was a crazy ass character. Mm-hmm. Like, she really did bring a lot to the show. And it it let, lets the me. other ones, like, bounce off of each other, I guess. Yeah. It never occurred to me either. Like, I was surprised when I heard that as well. Like, Tony. Okay. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> she never, like, you know really stuck out to me like she had her own little drama like, yeah like she was extra little you know i think it's kind of like blanche Devereaux to an extent yeah. she was the infamous one um to me because she was always like this like to me blanche would just say whatever came out of her right. head through her mouth and tony was like that in the sense the shit she used to say to maya it, she gave it to joan the most but yeah. the, even the stuff she would say to maya and lynn were like Damn, no filter. I just felt like everything was centered around Joan. Yes. So I guess that's why it never really occurred to me that Tony would be the one 
to basically derail mm -hmm. the entire series. It was just yeah. Cause we, we love seeing extreme versions of ourselves. Basically, we do and I think that. that people, even if you hated her, because mm -hmm. I'm sure a lot of people, when there was no clue that she was leaving the show, mm -hmm. maybe she was their least favorite character. Mm -hmm. But once mm -hmm. she was gone, it was like. You need that crazy. She you know had what I mean? Yeah. She definitely completed the dynamic. It's like, that's one thing about shows or even music groups. Mm -hmm. Like, you'll always get that perfect formula. And once one thing is missing, it's never the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's like when Omari on the B2K. Honey, that's like crippled when B2K. Went to her crushed Omarion. Yes. <laughs> you know what? No, you did not slip Omarion into yes. this I'm discussion. I'm Omarion if you no. ever listen to this. <laughs> I'm yeah. on your side, I'm so okay? Over I'm you. on your side. <laughs> um, little Fizz ain't shit. But anyway. Little Fizz is being a true. <laughs> I don't want to get too on topic. <laughs> I don't want to get too on topic, but I, I love him. I like met and had dinner with him by accident. Oh, so. I knew that was coming. Yes, I remember the yes. moment. <laughs> but we besides all the lived point, it for like a month. I think we made her profile photo. <laughs> Facebook photo was her Amari. It was. It was so sad. I was just like, but that was like my high school crush. Yeah. I'm getting back to the point. Though. You should, you you should DM him that picture and just be like praying for you, babe. Right? Like through all this praying hard time. You, but the point that I was mainly trying to get at is that like when one piece of the puzzle puzzle is missing, mm -hmm. it is very noticeable. Yeah. Period. Yeah. It's just like when Insecure went into its little tear of like. Lawrence was like missing for a oh. while she was going through her shit. You just gave me agita when you said that. My right? heart just like just dropped, <laughs> right? But like that was me and Shout I was like you my friend, my Insta well, my Instagram friend, Mr. Ellis. Yes, but like even <laughs> then like it was just like, you know, you you got so used to it being Issa East, yeah. and Lawrence and everybody was, was like Lawrence Hive and all that shit. I was still team Issa, sorry. But I was not <laughs> I don't, I don't want to get into just, it, yeah, but I, not, let's just, say, I'm just going to say this and speak my piece. When you break up with someone and as you're getting to the end of the relationship, you feel like you have suspicions that they're dealing with or messing around with someone who they used to mess around with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then you break up and it's validated that they are messing with that person or trying to be with that person. That just like. I don't I know. Like it just yanked a lot face. of integrity out of what you added to the relationship. Yeah. And that's why I was not Team Issa during that. Because I'm like, you could have dealt with anyone. You Anybody dealt with someone else, that was your, your ex, ex that yeah. you were seeing behind his back. So. Bitches be tripping and falling. You they know what happens. Yeah. Yeah. So she's seeing really him and acting a whole down. damn fool. It's not. A whole damn not, fool. Yeah. That was like, it was like, okay, so at the beginning I was Lawrence High because she should have never cheated on him, period. And then I'm going to just end on that. But, like, <laughs> afterwards, he just started walling out. And then he, As he up, should like, have. No. No. You have shit. to wild out. To okay. I'm but you don't let's matter. Not, too far anyway, down let's, let's go back up. to Mara. But I think this is a good point because one of the things that is, um, you know, there's overlap between Insecure and Girlfriends is that it was said that Girlfriends was, like, the black version of Sex in the City, you definitely mm -hmm. can say that about Insecure now. Yeah. And Kimber talks a lot about sisterhood. I know we talked about the dynamics of the characters, but we spent a fair amount of time, I feel like, last season delving into the whole sisterhood thing. Like, does it still exist? Do we value it? Mm -hmm. And that type of thing. And I think that jumped off the screen with girlfriends because they definitely, definitely. all had their own squabbles. There were times where it was two against two or three yeah. on one or one on one. What do you yeah. say, Kimber, about the sisterhood angle? I mean, one thing I noticed is that they, like, lived up to the theme song. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, they were always, always, always down for each yeah, other, 100%. Like, literally. <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. So, that, that was, um, I think, a big theme centered around sisterhood, um. I'm trying to like remember like just the worst situations possible a lot of times like there'd be instances where one of them would like start seeing some guy mm -hmm. and then like their friendship suffer or 
someone, typically Lynn, doesn't have a fucking job. Everyone's been yeah, on Joan's couch, couch at some point. I loved how she would like live with each of them, or she literally li- lived with everyone right. at one point. Maya, William, and Joan for the most part. And then even Maya having a job show. working right outside of Joan's office, that in itself is like, you know, just lending a hand mm-hmm. to pull your friends up. That's, yeah, yeah it's it's important. Sisterhood is definitely important. Um, I feel like if we don't have each other's backs, then it's like, what's the point? Yeah, because no one else does. I feel like that whole thread of sisterhood that ran through that show is a teachable moment today. Yeah. Because people are so quick to cut each other off. And when you see some of the stuff they went through, I mean, at one point, one of them slept with the other one's ex or something like that. Yeah. I think that was probably one of the lower points mm-hmm. of the collective friendship. But... To your point, like, there are all these ups and downs, whether it was work-related, relationships, you know, fighting amongst each other. Like, it's okay to have disagreements. It's okay to not see eye to eye. It's okay to even wrong each other as long as it doesn't go beyond a certain point or delve into, like, abusive Mm -hmm. and come out of that stronger and closer and still, like, you know what I mean? Still look at each other as sisters. I think that's very important. And I think people nowadays... um, women since we're talking about sisterhood (laughs) we can learn a lot from that especially since um you know like there were definitely a lot of like societal themes throughout the show too Mm -hmm. um so it's like when you're basically going up against the world it also helps that even though the other characters couldn't actively do anything to help the person as they're like going through the situation they're there to talk about it so that's another like awesome thing that um but see see how beautiful he's the legacy of Griffin, mm-hmm. like they make you all speak again i didn't watch it but they make <laughs> you all speak and like from what i've heard i mean read and heard like it's it's just amazing how this woman this writer just has put everything all together in just one show mm-hmm. and inspired many many others and look at like the again i see most of like I follow the girlfriend's line, especially through Tracy and Liz mm-hmm. Ross, because that's who I know most yeah. of mm-hmm. them. But, uh, I mean, look at her latest job, I mean, uh, works, like she was in Blackish and now she's in, Bro- I mean, uh, one of the branches of the Blackish oh, yeah, family is Mixish, mm-hmm. and there's also Grownish, Grown-ish. and like Grownish is also, I think it will be at some level that kind like it will leave a legacy like girlfriend oh, has. Oh, I love Grownish, yeah. Grownish yeah, because it's from a college perspective, yeah. and um, like that's something black. that and black and mm-hmm. like there is not and only black, black at a PWI and like different worlds, so it's it's leaving its own yeah. And also Hispanic. Also. Yeah. So I think that South that's, Indian. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's amazing. Very inclusive. So you yeah. know, yeah. like there is a from girlfriends. That's the point A. Yeah. Let's see, well, TV, man. Shit. Let's not TV. forget. Ha- I want to go back to Mara. Like, having the, all of us are creatives, and her having a very clear vision of what she wanted for girlfriends, and being, she talked about being so close to the characters that she created and the women who portrayed them. Um, but this woman, I mean, it's very difficult for a black woman, especially a young black woman, to have gotten a show on. Yeah network tv and be on for so many years but right when all the stuff was happening with the writer strike she was able to start pitching the game mm-hmm. and even though girlfriends didn't return um she had both shows on at the same time which is in itself That's its own right. miracle While maintaining mm-hmm. flawless glowing skin right <laughs> let's talk about how yeah. stunning she is she's really beautiful second. yeah her and her sister her sister's an actress cara i hope mm-hmm. i saying right cara cara a kill. Um, and the fact that she had hands in so many other things, like Moesha, which is like a favorite and the for Parkers. me. And the Parkers, <laughs> which is another favorite for me. Like UPN was my shit when Don't I make was like, cry. Like, Don't right? Make me cry. like nostalgia <laughs> all the way. And it's like, who in here can say that they didn't watch Moesha or the Parkers and like enjoyed it? I, I had no can. idea until we started researching for this show that she was behind. The game. I had no I idea either, and that just goes to show you. And I was heavy when the game first came on. I was heavy in it, like I was dedicated. I was like, "Oh, girl, I understand." Like, and I really didn't. I was, <laughs> was five. I mean, but... really ahead of her time because when you, you watch the game, it was 
groundbreaking, hilarious. There's so many memeable moments yeah. in addition to memorable moments. But I think what stood out to me, given this platform, is that she, her vision for that was like, I really wanted to showcase the women's perspective in the world of professional sports, specifically mm -hmm. football. And it's like, that's what we're doing here, but for hip hop, right? So yeah, the fact that she was way ahead of the movement that's happening right now. And I think Shawnee O'Neal and Nigga Scott Young owe her some percentages too for these series, these pointless yes, series of yes. love and hip hop and I'm not married, but I'm fucking yeah. somebody and they got money. Mm, like, like yeah. basketball. Oh, Miss. Just and shout out to Mara Brock yeah. yeah. The beauty, shout the innovation, her. the accolades. Hopefully, the can we teach her in college in. too? <laughs> well, she, yeah. you heard yeah. her. She said she sixty million, and we could do a girlfriend's movie. Let's mm. let's get that that go you find know, me someone going. Needs to do it. <laughs> someone needs to do it. I really do hope you know in whatever form that we see. I mean, the reunion. I'm looking forward to on Blackish. I don't know if anybody, you guys have any predictions on what that's going to be about? The reunion? Well, the, not the reunion, but you know, the reunion of the girlfriend's cast on Blackish. Obviously, she's not Joan Clayton on Blackish. She's Rainbow. Mm. But all the women are going to be on that episode. I think they'll probably be like some kind of, oh, I'm in town for so-and-so. I've always hated you. Right. We fell out at this I, point. Or I think that, and they might have a secret to this. Yeah, yeah, that something. she wants to keep from Dre. That's my assumption. Yeah, I'm thinking, like, <laughs> I think it's still going to somehow tie back to the original girlfriends. But I think it's going to be, like, they're all going to link up because, like, somebody's going through something or something right. like mm -hmm. that. And then they're, she's going to invite them over and they're going to say something. She's like, I'm not Joan here. Or, like, whatever. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I have a whole Joan. life. I have a husband. I have kids now. That would be hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> but that's where I see it going, ultimately. So, Hollywood, I have a proposition for you. I am a screenwriter. Mm. Okay. So, put me in. <laughs> and, you know, I can write the secrets and all the dynamics <laughs> for the reunion. You never know. So yeah, because yeah, they're gonna they're gonna need a screenwriter for the movie. Yeah, <laughs> Julia Baldini there, the curly flower. The, at the, the curly movie. flower <laughs> on Instagram. To get a girlfriend's movie made. So oh, before we close out the girlfriend's discussion, you know what we gotta talk about, ladies. What's Kimber that? hinted at Mara's beautiful skin, which it is beautiful. Mm -hmm. Every now and then, you know, we use some cosmetics. But oh, yes. the beauty blender. Yes, how the beauty blender was. Shout out to Ria Ana Silva, a Latina <laughs> makeup artist. Amazing. Who is, Amazing. yeah. Amazing. We just talked about one amazing woman on this show, and then here's the makeup artist who's got this whole Hustling. amazing side story herself. This mm -hmm. was one of the first TV shows shot in HD, and mm -hmm. you know, pores are present, pimples are present. Oh, they are. And I don't know all the shenanigans that go on behind the scenes, but apparently, um, Rhea and honest, ugh, Rhea and Silva realized that you know, airbrushing would fix that issue, but it's like this huge process, clunky, clunky yeah. So she's yeah. like, oh, I'll just make these little foam. Thingies, but then people started stealing them mm -hmm. on yeah. set. I mean, it worked because she had four beautiful women that she had to, as we have here, that she had to do makeup for. Um, but then when she was like, oh, they're stealing it. Hmm. Maybe I need to make this into something. And for those of you who did not know, because I didn't know Twitter taught me another thing I learned on Twitter that I did not learn in school. Is the best. That is where the beauty blender came from, was this wonderful Latina makeup artist um, who was responsible for girlfriends but she also she also did makeup for Tupac mm -hmm. one of our favorites wow. Dr. Dre yes. Brandy who you mentioned from Alicia yes. Eve and she eventually moved into film and I don't, I don't know all the different films but she um did the makeup for the cast of Friday and yes. set it off so so Just that's an amazing resume. crazy story and shout out to, you know, African Americans and just our beautiful black people because that came from them. That came from us. Like, yeah. period. Come like, on now. There would be no creation of a beauty blender if it wasn't for us and our skin needed some special attention. Yet again, we are responsible for another great beat. <laughs> mm -hmm. No facts, for real. I just, like, want to do a super movie now where it's like, 
While Mara Brock Akil is putting girlfriends together, Corinne Stephens is out here doing this <laughs> and the other, like, just a no, you did not super timeline of the 90s and the early 2000s. It would be so lit. Yes. Like, just to see how many timelines intersect at what point. What a fucking Just take me back to, like, you know, the we're early just all 2000s smacked to about 2000. <laughs> Yeah, like until like two thousand and like nine when T Pain was up and popping. Oh shit, oh, not T Pain. Like, like, you know I love me some T Pain. <laughs> <laughs> <Shunny. laughs> but um, I can't. yeah. <laughs> well, it's not. They say nostalgia supposedly is is depression or some or form of it. I mean, but I don't air? think it's it's that. I think like what you said earlier, it's we missed that representation. That balance representation, we missed that innovation, and people were just doing shit like, oh, try this, and it like turned into 106 and Park was cute. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about that in the next episode in depth. Ooh. Oh, yes. He Something kept forgiving y'all like previews. Shout out to Free. <laughs> Shout out to Ananda Lewis, no relation. Um, but we're gonna talk about both of those women next mm. time. So, see, now we don't normally give y'all preview nuggets but you got a little preview nugget what a and privilege. you got the dipping sauce be happy but you know this is beautiful um just the appreciation like i said representation and understanding how amazing black people and black women are and we're going to talk about what i feel like was a whole bunch of appreciation for black people and black women in specific was y'all mm -hmm. y'all we're going to do some album review for rhapsody's eve mm -hmm. Before I let them jump in, I just want to say, we know, I know what Eve means. Um, the original woman, mother of humanity, all of us sitting here. So just the name Eve, I was like, okay, before I even listened to it. But I just want to quickly tell you the track names. And then I want them to talk about the tracks that stood out to them. But the track names in order, Nina, Cleo, Aaliyah, Oprah, Whoopi. Serena, Tyra, Maya, something I cannot pronounce, but I'm going to try. Ibtiaj, Merrily, Raina, as in Raina Biddy, um, Michelle, Iman, Sojourner, and my per one of my personal favorites, not not my favorite favorite, but one of my favorites uh, tracks, the, the last track, Afini, as in Afini Shakur, featuring Tupac Shakur's voice. So that's 16 tracks total. A lot to unpack, but I yes. I will save my what what's who wants to start? What stood out? What track do you want um, to talk about? Well, everybody knows if you don't know, I love Aaliyah. Aaliyah has been one of my favorite. Like growing up, I listened to every single Aaliyah album. I had all of it. Shout out to oh, Rhapsody so though. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> like I know all her songs by heart. I actually um. The little DJ mix, my first one, was for her 40th birthday anniversary. Okay. But shout out to Rhapsody because not only did she show love to so many powerful black women, like, she she came and did not play, period. But um, Aaliyah was definitely one of my favorite tracks. Her feature in anything Tupac, because Tupac is Tupac. Like, who doesn't love Tupac? And then even from the name of her album being Eve, it was mm -hmm. like the first thing I thought of was Eve as a rapper, as a person, mm -hmm. even though she's a little different now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Saved and sanctified. Yeah. And we're not even going to talk about who she married to, but let me stay focused. On the other side. <laughs> like Nina Simone, just all that. And like just reading the titles of the songs, I was just like blown away and I felt like, okay, like we're here. Like she's here. She has a message. And she's not letting you forget, period. For, so, that's what I got from it. I could definitely hear a conversation throughout the, all the singles that, you know, are in the album. And uh, I watched also the music videos, some of them. Oh, I didn't even watch the videos. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, as a fashion enthusiast... Uh-oh. Okay. <laughs> Screenwriter, like, fashion enthusiast, model... The curly flower. <laughs> the curly flower. <laughs> Now, I was like, "Wow, Rhapsody, you you ate it!" Because uh, there was this, uh, there is this track. Uh, it be what? 
Ooh, how do you say her name? Ibiza? Mm -hmm. Ibiza? Track nine. Yeah. With D'Angelo and Jizza, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. D'Angelo, God. Oh. Don't even get me started. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Don't like, be a drug addict, Oof. but D'Angelo is just. <laughs> Let's like, not act like what he was in the 90s or than what he was. Because your mama and everybody else's mama was on the end of the I don't know, babe. My mom is more of a maxi priest. Oh, oh okay. 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 Yeah, my mom is more of a method man. My mom is more of an algebra. Okay, like, let's do it. Ben Method man was her thing, but back to you. <laughs> back to you. Okay. Come on. <laughs> What you were saying. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a King D'Angelo in that video too. Oh, I need to make sure I add that to my queue. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, no, I love the fact that she incorporated in the video, uh, of course, Ibiza, she's the, um, uh, she was one, she won, I think she's the first uh, black woman to be featured as a fencing, um, mm -hmm. fencer, as a fencer. fencer. Mm -hmm. And uh, so she won, like on a global level, she's a, you know, a big one and for the first time a black woman, so shout out to her, Major. Ping, but, ping, ping, mommy. <laughs> and uh, up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I appreciated about the video the fact that sh uh, Rhapsody highlighted the Muslim culture, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so there are many girls with the veil and like the uh, Islamic, uh, Islamic Muslim um, uh, features, mm -hmm. you know. So and that's something that we don't see much. Yeah. And uh, especially in New York, like it's not a traditional setting. It's a uh, a New York, a trip, I would say Brooklyn or Harlem. I don't know, but like some very New Yorky New Yorker setting. So I appreciated that mm -hmm. about her. And uh, one of, of course. My favorite single was Ofra okay. because mm. not only is catchy a dollar dollar circulate, yeah, yeah, okay, mm -mm. Mm -hmm. but <laughs> you want them checks with the commas? Hey. <laughs> hey. I loved it because, of course, uh, she. I think that, I mean, in this track she definitely she talks about lots of money mm -hmm. you know she picked so the right name she picked mm -hmm. the right name she picked the right name for that so track for, and look Kaylee 47 was on there yes yeah. our I personal friend yes. 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 yes i love yes. her <laughs> i love her because uh she has a unique style and we don't see that often like we see lots of like rappers with masks like they're mm. all male and like yeah it gets boring mm -hmm. so i was like wow shout out to this girl it's my first time seeing her uh, i don't know you but i like you yeah yes yeah. i appreciate you man so, uh, yeah. see how many first times we can give you this is quite yeah interesting <laughs> just to touch on the kaylee she's super fucking yes dope. And if you ever get the chance to meet her, which I think the three of us have already. Mm -hmm. um, I hugged her. She, she feels amazing. We smushed her. Yeah, like There's a picture she, of us on our Instagram smushing LaKaylee. She is like, <laughs> her energy is definitely no, she being was super expressed sweet. through her music. I felt it. It's I being know. expressed through her music. Like, it's being captured perfectly. And she's just dope. And she's so chill. Mm -hmm. Like, I was at a first Saturday at the Brooklyn Museum. And that was the first time. Well, the second time I had bumped into her. And she, like recorded a video with me on my snapchat of us oh. singing like biggie and we were wilding out and it was just like regular and she's so. just like a constant mood like just the don't look at my face like pay yes. attention to my, my, my music yes yeah and going back to rhapsody i feel like that's exactly what she exactly. did because yeah. like she didn't make it about her anybody mm -hmm. could drop an album and be like this track is called Booty Shake. This track is called yeah, This. Yeah, it's about me, like, me, me. And every single name, even the name of her album, highlighted somebody else. Mm -hmm. Another yeah. black woman who's done something for the culture, who's made an impact. Yeah. And that, to me, speaks volumes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <sighs> All of these lovely, you know, beautiful responses, I appreciate and completely understand. Um... For me, but. <laughs> I but. too appreciated the track listing, the names. Um, her cover reminded me of Roxanne Shantae mm -hmm. as well with like that profile. Yeah. Um, so it's like, you know, 
beautifully bound with all of these intricate details, you know, it's very pro-black, it's very black woman. I loved all of that. Um, I don't know if it's just the mood that I was in at this particular time, but she lost me and she oh, really? couldn't keep my attention. Can't keep your attention. Um, and I'm big on, like, I'm very anal. Anyone that knows me knows, like, when it comes to music, I'm very particular. Um, so at first, for like the first few tracks, I was interested in the production. Mm -hmm. And I think the one I enjoyed the most was Nina and Whoopi. But I lost interest after a while. Um, she just couldn't keep me. I don't know if it was like... I mean, everyone's different and everyone receives things differently. Mm -hmm. But for me, um, lyrically, she fell a little flat. Mm -hmm. And I felt like um, she was kind of going in circles on certain, like certain verses and I felt like there was like it was a little repetitive for me um and just like you know I mean like I'm not someone that like listens to music and is like oh I want to dance you know like I'm not someone that goes to a movie and or like wants to watch a show and just be like oh I want to laugh like I'm yeah. not like I can appreciate more serious more intellectual missions in music but um I don't know Something about I wasn't I caught in the rapture of rhapsody. I wasn't. <laughs> I felt repetition, but yeah, maybe I was in a different mood. Right. So I don't know. I, that's what I'd like to think because it's yeah. not that it's not well done. It's not that it's trash or anything like yeah. that. It's, it's beautiful, and I see the I see the gravity of mm -hmm. it and the effect that it's supposed to have on me. I just don't know if it's because of my perspective or. Just the mood I was in. It is interesting that you mentioned. I definitely switched over to some Phil Collins, and I was just <laughs> Not out Phil here. Collins. Well, yeah. I listened. I would say the two times I listened to it straight through, um, I was definitely in two different moods and more receptive mm -hmm. the second time. Mm -hmm. um, but both times, I will say I felt like, in a I mean, this is a good thing. I didn't feel like I had to skip any tracks. <laughs> I skipped. That's always a good thing. Um, so that's one thing. But I'm going I am gonna skip through in the interest of time, just giving you guys my critiques and reaction. Not for all sixteen tracks. I wrote notes, but not for all sixteen. So just the ones that I felt so that I, I have to you? say something about. Yeah. I think that we cannot and you mentioned this track, Kimber, mm -hmm. cannot gloss over that first track, Nina. Especially since we're coming off of um, Kanye's rendition of that same sample yes, that he used in but Blood on the Leaves. She went to Blood at the Root. Right. She talked about not having to show her body. Mm -hmm. I love when people... See, me and Kimber both have Mercury and Scorpio. That's how we communicate. So I love when people just say what the, what the fuck they have to say. Mm -hmm. And don't try to dress it up and put icing on it. And it's not... And that's the thing. When you appreciate yourself, that doesn't mean you're downplaying or downgrading someone else. Right. So I love the fact that she just came out and said it. I don't have to show my body. And she referred to herself as a God MC. Mm -hmm. um, she said, all y'all look anime. Now, that was a shot, right? Mm -hmm. Because we talked about how there's like, you, you call it the... I think the stripper uniform for, for oh, female yes, rappers the now. The ice um, but she did allude to some things, you know... For us conspiracy theorists, she gave us some something to nibble at. Because mm -hmm. she said y'all was trying to kill me. Yep. Not literally, but of course you would try to kill a woman who is that good at wordplay, calls herself a god MC with good reason, yeah. and is, is not going to show her body, right? Yeah. She compared herself to Pop, and she I liked her wordplay. She said, we know who got the juice. She said she was more damned than the Mississippi. Mm -hmm. um, and she the said Mississippi to, goddamn. Bow this down, for and she 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 ended it, you know, towards the end. She said, Which "Bow is down also to the Nina queen." Song. Yeah, mm -hmm. she said, "Bow down to the queen." So I felt like you, if you don't listen to anything else, really sit with that first track. That first track is there first for a reason to open this album. E, mm -hmm. Aaliyah, me and Aaliyah, uh, if she was living close, very close to the same age, um, so I was there. My ex. Um, was that you know she came to his prom that was like a big deal in Detroit yeah um, but I like the fact that 
she, you know, she talked about being cool to be a tomboy. I like the fact that not only did she pay homage to Aaliyah and that she called the track Aaliyah, but that you heard Aaliyah's background vocals as she used a lot of Aaliyah's lyrics in her wordplay. I thought that was really dope. Um, and then um, I guess that was track three. Track four with LaKaylee we talked about. I just love LaKaylee anyway. So the fact that she had her on the song and that she was not only rapping, but that she was in the hook, I really loved. Um, it was interesting that she spoke of like some of her bars spoke of slavery massa and forefathers i wasn't expecting that on track with lakaylee um my favorite song to booty shake too like to get up in the morning it wasn't that it had a lot of depth but i love serena yeah stop stop yeah, get it did. get it i really felt like you know whatever you felt about the album that particular song she wrote the hell out of that beat yeah. like go back and listen to serena Male or female, I haven't heard any rapper ride a beat that tightly, so tight, um, like she did on Serena. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to skip all the way down to Raina's interlude, and, you know, we both yeah. follow her. I started following her on Tumblr, and I follow her on Instagram now. and watch her journey with her love life, her ch her motherhood, and all of that. Um, so I, I was just shook as <laughs> at Raina's interlude. It wasn't even a song. It was an interlude and just to start with, hey, this is an ode to the black woman's body. And I'm like, whoa, what's coming? So just some things I pulled out from that was, I don't want to survive alone again. Promise this time that your body will make it home to me. Nobody tells you how to survive as a black woman. That was the most powerful line mm -hmm. in that interlude. I was like, oh, shit. Fact. You done hooked me. A whole chill. You are a threat on every part of the map. Every part. Of I the want map. a shirt that says that. As a black woman, um, you are too compassionate, too forgiving, but never afraid to show up. Make them shirts. Make, yeah, make shirts. that shirt there. <laughs> but too compassionate, too forgiving, and too, but never afraid to show up. Like those mm -hmm. three things together. Mm -hmm. um, gorgeous even through suffering. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but it's all facts. It's, it's all definitive. Too. My two favorite songs. Like uh, I guess I have to pick one, right? My totally favorite song, even on two. the second, my, my top two. Iman is my favorite. Yes. It's my favorite. She talks about Michelle Obama, Foxy Brown, just dark skin, Ebony, it's Black like Don't a, Crack, Cicely Tyson. I, it's like people a have made skin, songs girl. saying they love brown skin and then said, fuck shit, we all know who you know, you know who you are. But she was really giving the love. And Beyonce's song also, I feel like, gave the love. But to I brown think skin. One was but more this poetic. was more yeah, it was more poetic. More straightforward. Mm -hmm. I really more grown up. And even just the cadence of the song. Yeah. It's very catchy. So Iman, I think that was one of the songs. Shout out to Finesse. She was one of our judges yes, at the Cypher. Finesse. The same day that I heard that song and I shared it, because now you can share from title to Instagram. Um <laughs> I saw that Finesse shared it. So I was like, okay, I'm not the only one really feeling this song. Um I fangirled the fuck out and almost cried on track 14. I had no idea Queen Latifah was on that fucking song. As soon as I heard her voice, Queen Latifah could have did a poopity scoop and I would have been like, yay. But she didn't. She really laid down some... I was like, oh shit, the queen is still, still the fucking it. queen. Mm -hmm. um, so that... Ugh. And then, I mean, I, I really like the um, collab with, with, with J. Cole on Sojourner. Mm -hmm. Afeni... My second favorite, there's so many things in there. First of all, she named it after Fanny Shakur. A lot of people forget whatever you think of Tupac, good or bad, and everything in between. He was born in prison to a Black Panther. Like, yeah. I don't, I mean, that's how your fucking story starts. What yeah. else could you be right. but a poet and an artist? Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, people have criticisms of who Tupac decided to be with later. Feel like he fell into the stereotype of, you know, Eurocentric beauty or whatever and his thing with Madonna but at the end of the day to hear his words in the background about honoring and loving black women over and over again as she says things like another t-shirt idea um, mm -hmm. you overlook our beauty but you love it on others Ooh. that was a whole word <laughs> a <Literature>. read like <laughs> scripture <laughs> No. Themes of self-hatred mm -hmm. from black men, you know, we ain't your bitches or your, your hoes or your bitches. And then you still hear in the background, while we take from our women, 
do we hate our women? But then she talks about black men and black women, which is a revolutionary thing to say today, coming together because black women and black men are separately today being encouraged to not love one another. And some of us are doing the dis discouragement. Um, and it's, it's like, you know, there's something wrong with the person that looks like me, right? I come from a black man and a black woman, but I don't want that for myself. You see? And so she really delves into that. And so she started with Nina and she ended with Athene. There's a lot of stuff going on in between with Michelle, Serena, Whoopi. And so it was just beautifully executed. Mm -hmm. It was just beautifully executed. Yeah. And like you said, you know, you listen to it a first time, second time, third time, your mood. But I would say it's worth a listen and it's worth a oh, listen yeah, and it's worth a listen. And it's you worth learn. a listen. And every time you listen to it, I think you're going to get something yeah, else something out of it. New, yeah. Absolutely. It is a beautiful body of work. And it's well thought out. Um, way more than any Bodak Yellow or... <laughs> We're not Bodak you know, Yellow. Hot Girl <laughs> Summer could ever be. And oh, for God. that... We still love for you, that, um, but, don't, uh, but. Julia loves you. <laughs> Well, Sadia and Chi Chi love Tension, tension, tension. Houston! <laughs> <laughs> but you know, yeah, um, it, it's definitely a great work of art. And yeah. she definitely falls into that Ray of Hope category. Mm -hmm. Like Reggie and the competitors yeah. from our Cypher. Shout out to Big Summer. Leash. Shout out to Energy Charlemagne. Shout out to She Bees. Come on. Shout out now. to Drina. Yes. yes. All of Shout out to just the cipher in general. Yeah. That was a dope nope. night. Nope, I'm still recovering. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Shout you're right. That. It was a great, Shout it was an awesome to night. night. Shout out to us doing our fucking thing. Girl. This year, this summer, with the year, with the year that 2019 has been in our And we still all people. did our thing separately. Yeah. Kimber, with together. everything she does with her art and her t shirt line, mm -hmm. everything you're doing, Muse Love the Chaos. This, like, I don't think any of us had easy years, yeah. and the year's not even over. Definitely. It's not, but I still have a good feeling about it. Same. Yeah, this turnaround is 2020. This is the build. November about to be my, my month. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vision 2020. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. you, you know what, Julia? Yeah, this is the so one fucking line. Adorable, <laughs> kills me. But yes, we did. We any did parting thoughts, thing. ladies? Um, we can start here and move around. We'll yes. start, we're going to start with air. We're going to go into some fire <laughs> and the earth. And then we're going to come back to air. Yes. Well, definitely, I can say that. I'm always learning through this podcast. Yes. Always. So, <laughs> shout out to my Italian friends listening <laughs> from Italy. I know you are. And they love you. They love us. Oh, oh they do? They hey, do. Italia! What's Hi. up? She <laughs> said Italia. Ciao. Cappuccino. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Versace. Versace. Like pasta. <laughs> right? I'm still on that clam pasta, but we're not going to get it. Maitano! <laughs> no, like, I, I always learn, and it, it's just amazing because, you know, I'm, I'm discovering, I'm in the process of learning how to be a woman of a young woman of color and not only like in america because i'm not i cannot say that i'm african-american mm -hmm. but like there are so many things that i can learn from this community with being you know inside this community for some other from some re reasons or not and so i always learn and it is educational i'm so glad that there is a voice like for voices like ours that can you know project these visions these things because people need to hear us people need to hear these things mm -hmm. so yeah tune yeah. in stay tuned hell yeah <laughs> she is <laughs> um my parting words or whatever are um that for myself, as well as most people that I've been speaking to, um, whether it's in life as a friend or a family or just in passing from 
you know, strangers, um, that the energy in the air has been very heavy lately. And I feel like um, everyone is going through something to some degree, um, and everyone is being, if not put to the test, just prepared for the next phase of whatever is coming. So, um, for a change, I'm not going to scold. I'm going to be a bitch. I'm going to be positive. Oh, shit. And, um, <laughs> you know, just wish everyone the best of all there is to get once mm -hmm. this period is over. And um, just strength to go through it and get through it. Um, to just persevere, even if it's not something that's, like, tragically heartbreaking, but just difficult. Just, you know, bite down, shut the fuck up, and get on. <laughs> get on with it um my parting thought to just like this was an amazing episode i can't wait to listen to it on the run back when it's published but we definitely covered a lot of important things and we focused on a lot of like just black women doing their damn thing that goes back to what i said a few minutes ago with just us like you know we're here we're we still have our jobs that we're doing we still have our everyday life we still have family and you know friendships and connections that we have to tend to but it's like at the end of the day for us to still be able to come together and do something like this is amazing yeah. so that's my parting thought is just like i i really enjoy this i really enjoy y'all i love y'all thanks for having me she's like super emotional today and guys <laughs> she's so lovely oh my goodness um, <laughs> and shout out to the cypher over the summer that ran us a mug but we still hold it the fuck down yeah. During retrograde. Out, um, uh, during <laughs> yes. retrograde. During retrograde. Shout out to the pop up that I'm still so very proud of and still coming down from like a high of. And I'm gonna drop some photos and y'all gonna see what it's about. But stay tuned to what's to come. And again, thank you, Chi Chi, for hey. just having this vision <laughs> ultimately and creating Poppin' Off Pink and just doing the damn thing that you yes. do. Thank Seriously, you. because before this, I didn't want to speak to a soul. <laughs> I was not remotely interested in anything hip hop related. So Except much. Freddie Gibbs. <laughs> Freddie Gibbs. <in. laughs> My king future. Oh lord. Uh, <laughs> All right. So. To... <laughs> but you know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Do you want me to say hi to him? I'm so oh, good. Good. Yeah. I'll give you my soul in a box to present him with. Jesus, fix it. <laughs> so she cheated. My party thoughts. Um, because I wasn't on the last episode, I didn't get to a chance. I'm not gonna go crazy into detail, but I had the most amazing trip home to Chicago. I was just. Wanted to go home and just get a break and, and connect with my city. And I ended up at the Chicago, um, first Chicago Sunday service with Kanye West. So shout out to my uncle because I didn't tell anybody I was coming home. And then I was like, I really need a ticket to this. And he came through. So shout out to my uncle Brian. I really appreciate it. He was on stage with Kanye and texted me throughout the whole thing and then I was there with all these strangers who were strangers but not strangers because they were Chicagoans and just everything about that trip um which I won't go into detail mm -hmm. was amazing um including Had my your little own girlfriend's experience mm -hmm. including my shopping spree right. yeah. it was amazing and so that's shout out to my city and shout out it's funny because Kanye's in New York tonight, none of us got tickets, but we just went on the album to drop because we know we're going to talk about that mm -hmm. next time. And a lot of other music dropped this weekend that we just couldn't get to. Um, so I did listen to The Baby this morning while I was cleaning. I did like it. Yes. It was very easy to listen to. Yeah. I tried to... And it's funny because I... Mean, it's I the baby, of course. I tried... Really I couldn't voice. get through the whole album for Kevin Gates, but I did start listening to it. It was like up and down for me, but I haven't listened to the whole thing, so I want to give an album review. Um... Young and May dropped her story this mm -hmm. weekend. I have not listened to that, but I'm going to listen to it this week. So this was just a lot of music um, coming out. Mm -hmm. um, shout out to all y'all because y'all kind of, you know, continue to like uplift me and show me sisterhood. And I think it's just beautiful. All of us come from different places, whether it's you know Julia is coming from Julia's the, whole like <laughs> Italy <laughs> airport right movie. like just the whole international yeah. perspective I'll just say that 
because it's like Italy, but then the Brazilian aspect also. Yeah. And Kimber is is American but Jamaican, and then today have all lots of things going on mm -hmm. <laughs> in her background. Yeah. And I am African American and Native American, so this is like literally the country that was stolen and built from my ancestors. So that's just a whole weird perspective to come from in general, but we're all sitting on this couch together. How beautiful yeah. And I think that's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, so make sure you're following these hashtags. Women Talk Hip Hop. Women Talk that Hip Hop. That started here. Mm -hmm. I don't know if anyone else is using it, but Women Talk Hip Hop. I'll be damned. Bad Bitch Hysteria, because that's yes. what we do and that's what we bring. Um, make sure you subscribe. Some of y'all like to watch us. Some of y'all like to listen. Some of y'all like to do both in different order. But we're on YouTube. We're definitely on Apple. We're on Stitcher. We're on a whole bunch of other platforms this time. We're on like Radio All Public. and So you can subscribe. I highly encourage you to reach out to us um, with commentary, feedback, show ideas. But I'm very excited um, for this the rest of this season. And I'm excited because we're going to talk about some pioneers as Kimber alluded to earlier we're going to talk about ananda lewis and free um so thank you for sharing this moment with us and we will see you next time bye ciao peace out popping off paint okay <laughs>